Thank you all for uh, joining this session today. My name is Zare Tashtian and I've been with Click Support for over four years now. This topic is very, very interesting and it's a, it's, it's a topic that keeps coming up frequently. And when we're dealing with large environments where complex networks and uh, security and devices are all included in this one network, it's, it's becoming a very challenging task to troubleshoot and point to where a problem exists. What we're going to talk about is what are environment diagrams, the types, the level of details that we need on a diagram, and what really click support asks for a diagram and what we expect to have on it and, and why we want them. Uh, also, how to prepare a diagram. We looked at different tools and we're going to show you a few of them where you could really make it very quick to sketch something very, very quickly, even on the phone while you're talking with the uh, support engineer to that extent. And we'll show you some templates that we've put together to make life easy. And then uh, how to share them with support and additional information to share with the environment diagram. It could be uh, the environment details and logs and so on. So we, we prepared the list of those. And then, uh, of course, the maintenance, how to keep the diagrams always new, up to date, any changes that happen in the environment to keep them updated. And finally, we will talk a bit about GDPR and privacy policy and what we expect to have on the environment diagram and and the fact that we destroy them after 180 days. So we don't keep any of that for more than 180 days. What are environment diagrams? It's a representation of the deployment architecture. And usually it, it uh, displays the topology and uh, network devices. Uh, it also helps organizations and teams to visualize how devices work uh, within a network because uh, when we troubleshoot, we would like to see how many devices are in, in that environment to be able to check the points where the communication takes place. Also, it makes it easy to understand how the connections are made between the devices. From point to point troubleshooting, that becomes very important because uh, as you all know, we, we get lots of cases to do with dropouts, connection lost error messages, and this is exactly a situation where we need a network diagram because almost 90% of the connection lost cases that we get are related to the network and devices within the network. Things like idle timeouts uh, of a device, time to live settings of a device and so on. And the last point is that it, it maps the, the structure of the network and uh, we use different symbols to identify different devices and the connections and we will go through all this. Uh, in some examples. It also illustrates the flow of the information from where the information starts to end between the client machine and ClickSense server, for example, all the flow of the information, what path it takes, uh, whether it's virtual private network, whether it's uh, another virtual network which is not private, and uh, how that communication flows all the way to the ClickSense server. Also identifies components uh, like routers, which is a very problematic device. Uh, same with uh, firewall settings that we come across that are blocking communication, network load balancers, subnets, where certain devices belong to one subnet or another subnet, protocols, and the general traffic flow. Also, it uh, allows to troubleshoot issues to do with network, security, and compliance. In the future, also, it's good to have a diagram like this when preparing to upgrade. And we can see there how the, how the upgrade will impact on the environment, how many nodes that you have, uh, whether all the nodes need to be upgraded, whether you have a separate database server for ClickSense, for example, if it's a dedicated database server, how many nodes, all these questions frequently get asked in a support case. Uh, to go deeper into what devices we would like to see, we would like to see client devices, which are like PCs, mobile phones, tablets, whatever the users on the client side are using, the servers, the nodes, the host names of each server, IP addresses, if possible. If, if there is a security, of course, uh, prevent sharing all that information, that's fine. We understand. You don't have to put them, but if, it, if it's included, it makes 
easier to troubleshoot. Also, the number of nodes, uh, web servers that are in between QuickSense server and the clients. For example, if you're using IIS with QuickView for a web server, database servers, failover nodes, it's good to know all this. And same with uh, Active Directory, if you're using uh, an LDAP server, would like to see services on each node, the database service, the proxy service, and engine service, for example, all the ClickSense services. So network diagrams can be um, at, the, at certain detail, like uh, very high level or down to services level within each node. Uh, network load balancers are very important to have uh, on the network diagram as well. And also uh, switches, gateways, and external routers are very important. Something with network load balancers, we see a lot of settings that interfere with connectivity. So if there's a load balancer, it's definitely good to have that over the network diagram. And uh, finally, connections and security, inbound and outbound, uh, a security firewall settings, if there are, same with uh, ports, uh, certain ports uh, can be displayed over network diagrams, and we can identify and see if it's the right port for ClickSense or not. Uh, network diagrams can be logical and physical. Uh, if we talk about logical diagrams, it's basically the flow of information we want to see over the logical uh, network diagram. And uh, it shows how many how devices are communicating with each other, also uh, the protocols, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, and so on. Same with LDAP protocol. Uh, and physical, basically, it shows um, how physically network devices are connected with each other in a physical environment, cables and servers. What we usually do is once we get the network diagram, we try to interpret the logs and match the network diagram. Support also needs this network diagram to have a proactive approach. If we notice something in the environment that may be affected by upgrade, we draw the user's attention to it beforehand. So it's good to have that overall holistic picture of the environment. And as I mentioned before, it can be at granular level or broad level. It also uh, identifies the host name and IP addresses. It uh, gives us the big picture of the environment. And most importantly, it reduces the interactions between the support engineer and, and the partner working on the case. Because we all know, we keep asking for information. And if we have all this information in the first place, how many nodes and how many devices just makes it one communication. Uh, what's good to know is in each environment, if it's the development environment, test environment, UAT or production. If it's development environment, we know SLAs will be different than production. So it's good to note this. Also, uh, Click Support has an area where you could set the environment information by license. Uh, there is the next slide, which I will share with you, and it will show all of that. And then it shows how you can set that up and add your uh, license details and then uh, create the environment that matches the environment diagram. And then next time you open a support case, you just choose that environment and all the license details and everything else will come across to the support case. Uh, we will go through how to draw the environment using a free tool called draw.io. And uh, I will use some examples there from icons that we downloaded from our click support uh, portal and AWS, where uh, this uh, tool, draw.io, can be used to use these icons and sketch something very quickly. This slide here shows how to set up the environment in the support portal when you log in. So you can create a new environment there with the green button, and, uh, and then at, down the bottom there, it lists all your environment, if it's production or dev. In the future, we're going to add an option to attach the environment diagram to the environment that you set up here. At the moment, you can just upload the diagram as an attachment in the support case. How to draw deployment diagram tools such as draw.io? First of all, you identify the purpose of the diagram, identify the nodes that are in the system and how they are interacting with the other devices. And then it's very simple. You just figure out the relationships between the nodes and the devices, how they are connected. And then you can iterate that process and clarify more and more with your internal teams and to have a clear understanding of how all this communication works. 
once, that's it. And then it can just be modified every time if the environment changes, but all the components will still be there. And uh, of course, the dependencies are very important between these components and the objects that are on the diagram. If you go to the AWS website and you could see there that there are icons that you can download for different tools. The one, the tool that uh, we recommend is draw.io, the, the one in the middle here. And uh, if you click on that, you can um, download the icons. The tool can be downloaded from draw.io or app.diagrams.net. It's very easy to use, or you could use any diagramming tool that you have, like Visio or any other tools that your organization has. We created a template with icons, preset icons, using draw.io that you can download from this article link below. And there's a special slide now uh, showing those details. Uh, when you go to draw.io website or app.diagrams.net, uh, you can create a diagram online, or you could download the desktop version of this tool. Uh, there is a link at the bottom of this slide. You can click on that and get a zip file that you can run as an installer. Once you do that, uh, you can go to this article, a knowledge-based article. It's called Documenting Environment Diagrams, and the link uh, is shared in this slide. Once you go to this article and you scroll down on the page, you will see that there is a zip file. If you open that zip file, you will see this diagram, and uh, these are all uh, editable. You could drag them, you could move them. As you can see here, you have on the right side the click sense nodes. You have, uh, for example, click server one domain local, the top one there, the top node. You can have the services in it listed, like there is the proxy service, the scheduler, the engine, and the database, and the repository service. Moving to the left from the right, you see there could be a load balancer and then the whole internet there communicating with the firewall and the virtual the virtual uh, private networks it could be vpn one or two there could be a reverse proxy in the middle there could be a router before the vpn and so on so if you have multiple routers you have a reverse proxy wherever it is you may have a reverse proxy before the load balancer before click sense so you can move these icons the way you like and share this diagram with us so what I recommend is you download this zip folder and uh, open it in this tool and uh, start building some diagrams there and share them with us. And then we have some examples that you could draw. Um, this shows another type of diagram where it shows more like the services. Uh, this is another one with the load balancer and uh, the hub. And then you have two nodes there. And this is, again, another way of using the services and multi-node environments. And this is something similar to the first slide that we saw on Amazon. So how to share environment diagrams with support? Attach them to each support case and then match the environment, where it's UAT or prod, and then confirm that it's up to date before sharing. That's very important. What you can attach with environment diagrams the environment details, we have that batch file that most of you know already. You can run it on the server and get the environment details. And that way we have a matching uh, representation of the environment in a text file. And the rest of the details, like the operating system and product name and version and logs and, and security information. Additional information may be needed related to that if it can be shared. Uh, maintaining it up to date, uh, as maintenance plan, it's important. If number of nodes change, if you add a failover node, if the security hardening increases, if you have proxy settings connecting to the net internet, it's good to mention those. If you add a reverse proxy, you can add that device. Network load balancers is a very common problem we have with connectivity. It's good to mention that. The ports on the diagrams can be listed on the communication points between each device. Once the information is sent to us, we delete them after 180 days according to our GDPR policy. And the details are on that link there, click.com, US Trust GDPR. If after 180 days you open a support case, we may not have that environment details anymore. So you, you will need to submit it again. By that time, things might have changed in the environment. 
So it's good to get a fresh one. That's basically it. Thank <music> you.